as uh, as COVID's kind of uh, evolved, and hopefully we're kind of you know working through that process now. Um, hopefully, the I've, I've been waiting to see the new normal for <laughs> two years. I've, I keep hearing the phrase, but not really sure what that. So, um, you know what what is that? What does that look like? What's next? What's what's coming around the bend? We're currently running the monoclonal antibody infusion suite upstairs. I guess that's f- hopefully finishing off the last of, of COVID. Um, but we're really looking to expand this whole packaging and what we like to call independent living concept. There's a lot of people who don't want a loved one in a, a nursing home, assisted living. Our box and our service, I feel, is like helps to keep those people in the home. You guys do a, a lot of the you know facilities and, and LTC currently. Um, but I noticed that's one of the things that you guys talk about on your website is kind of that alternative. Um, and I, I thought that was a really interesting kind of thing to focus on, you know, especially on your website, but that, you know, senior care at home. Well, yeah, I mean, from, so from a business model, look, if we're being perfectly honest, senior citizens take a lot more meds than most people. So our bread and butter is the Medicare population. You know, more and more commercial plans, you're getting squeezed out. You know, they have to go to CVS. They have to go elsewhere. Um, so that Medicare population is really our bread and butter. And, and really, how we got started with any of that, uh, my folks are in their 80s, almost 90s. My mom lays my dad's pills out every night at supper time. Yeah. My mom was in the hospital. My dad called me in tears and said, I, I don't know what I take. It was like that old story about the shoemaker's kid has no shoes. You know, I was embarrassed. My father didn't know when to take his drugs. So, you know, that was our first four way into uh, four way into compliance packaging. And from there, I realized, look, there's a lot of people in the same situation. Oh, yeah. So we, we don't really focus on facilities as much as we try to focus on that population that is aging in home. Nice. Looks like CMS is finally starting to recognize that as well. So that's really our hope for the future is there's better reimbursements and better opportunities in that space because it's it's much much more cost effective to keep a senior in their home than for them to end up in a nursing home and ultimately on a Medicaid government paid stay. So let's hope the powers that be do that math and realize it. Yeah, for sure. And there's, you know, there's also something to be said for the dignity and quality of life to be able to, you know, maintain your health longer and and, and stay in your own, you know, environment. Um, What's really cool about that focus is that it's really one of those win-win situations where, you know, the pharmacy is able to uh, provide a valuable service uh, that's going to help the patients uh, and ultimately, it's going to save, you know, it, it, it's going to really a, a improve the effectiveness of a Part D plan. I mean, that's really the the entire idea there. And so it's this win 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 situation where you're combining those enhanced services like delivery, uh, adherence packaging. I'm sure you, under those circumstances, you have a much better process to kind of you know look at their therapeutic profiles and, and optimize those. Um, it seems like such a, a no brainer. Uh, and yet at this point, you're still basically only reimbursed for the prescriptions themselves, right? Correct. Correct. Where do you see that going over the next couple of years? Do you see, you know, CMS, um, you know, kind of, kind of pushing out more uh, guidelines on that? I mean, they've already, started discussing it, but the hope is they'll recognize medical at home as a separate payer class, um, move away from a lot of the DIRs that are crushing all of us, and possibly a slightly better dispensing fee as well for that service. So that's the Medicare space. Um, Medicaid, it's the same discussion. So for state Medicaid, you know, there's a lot of managed care Medicaid. Everybody's hurting on that. So if you can get your local governments, state governments to recognize this aging in home place for that population, it'd help a lot too. Nice. That's our hope anyway. So you've got three locations. Uh, you've identified this kind of uh, unified need where you can pool resources. 
a strip package out of that one location instead of buying three strip packaging machines, uh, which can obviously add up very quickly. Uh, not only that, just, you know, it's, it's also staffing and training and uh, everything that goes along with it. Um, so it sounds like you've really, you're, you're kind of building your own um, infrastructure there that's really going to make a big impact on, on the senior population in your area. Yeah, that's the hope. I mean, the other nice thing, again, speaking to your software, is I have people cross-trained at the other locations that if someone can't use the interface at the Washington location, someone at one of the other stores can still continue to send jobs over to the robot. So, you know. If you set your computers up right and have enough network access, you can have some layers of duplication. People get sick. People are positive for COVID. We've been able to continue to function without too, too many hiccups. Thanks for listening to this clip from Beyond the Scripts, presented by the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please support our channel by liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell so that you'll be notified anytime we post new content. To stay up to date with all of the latest independent pharmacy news and content, follow Pioneer RX on your preferred social media platform.